Hi friends, here in this video, I'll be deriving the formula in which I'm going to give the relation between the rate of loading and shear force and bending moment. That is the basic derivation which is required for shear force and bending moment. So let's get started. Now for this, I'll first draw a simple diagram. So here is a simply supported beam, supported at A and B, the length of the beam is capital L and it is subjected to a generalized loading means here the type of loading is still not clear and what I am going to do here is after this, I will take two sections on this beam that is section M, M and section N. N. and the distance between these two sections is dx next by taking the small distance dx I am going to analyze this entire beam and for that I will draw another diagram just adjacent to it so dx is the length of the beam considered and as we see here on to the left hand portion, here we have section MM and on the right side we have section NN. Then the generalized loading, I am assuming it to be a uniformly distributed load that is UDL. This UDL is having intensity small w and the unit I am assuming it is Newton per meter because it is force per unit distance that would be proved in this problem. Then when this UDL would be replaced with the help of a point load in that case that point load would be acting exactly at the center and the value of the point load would be W into the length of the beam which is dx. So therefore So this W into dx is nothing but the UDL converted into point load and it will be acting at a distance of exactly half that is dx by 2 from section mm and also from section nn. Then on this right hand side I am considering an upward shear force because of the action of the loading the beam is going to shear so I am considering here the shear force. Suppose I am taking the value or the direction as downward, the shear force is denoted by F and here I am assuming there is also a bending moment because of the external loading because the beam is subjected to both shear as well as bending. So there will be a shear force as well as the bending moment and the bending moment I am assuming it to be clockwise on the right hand side. Similarly opposite to, the, to it there will be a shear force in the upward direction whose value will increase depending upon the distance so that is f plus df f is up to this right hand side face and when the distance is dx in that case there is increase of shear force by df so it becomes f plus df similarly we have a bending moment in the clockwise direction opposite to it there will be another bending moment which will act in an anti clockwise direction having the value m plus dm because due to the increase in length dx there is increase in bending moment by dm so the total bending moment on face mm would be m plus dm and on face nn it is m now since here i have drawn the fbd this is the free body diagram of the given beam so now i can use the conditions of equilibrium in order to get the formula so first i'll say that since there are only vertical forces acting there are no horizontal forces so I'll use the condition of equilibrium that is summation of Fy equal to 0 where the upward forces are treated positive and downward forces are taken as negative therefore here we can see this F on the right hand side is acting in downward direction so that is minus F here we have F plus DF so that is upward which is taken as positive 
Next, we have W into dx, the UDL which was converted into the point load acting downward to minus W into dx is equal to 0. So, these are the forces. Now, from this plus F and minus F will get cancelled out and what we are left with is minus W into dx goes on the right hand side, it becomes positive. So, we have dF is equal to w into dx now keeping w on one side df upon dx is left so therefore this is equation one and equation one gives the relation between the rate of loading that is the intensity of loading which is w also called as the uniformly distributed load and the shear force which is denoted by f and here from this equation we can clearly see that df upon dx depending upon the length w value will change so here we have df by dx and the unit would be since force is having a unit of newton distance suppose it is in terms of meter so it is newton per meter that is the intensity of udl so i can say that equation one gives the relation gives a relation between the intensity of loading and the shear force. Now I will use the next condition of equilibrium that is summation of moment and I am taking the moment about the left hand section that is section mm is equal to 0 wherein the convention is anti-clockwise moment would be treated positive whereas clockwise moment would be treated as negative. So therefore Looking into this FBD when I am taking the moment about section mm, on this very section we have a moment of m plus dm, anti-clockwise so positive, then on the right hand side that is on section nn there is a moment which is clockwise so it will be treated as negative so minus m, then at the same time since we are taking the moment about section mm and from here the force f plus df is passing on this section. So, its moment will be equal to 0 whereas when I consider this F on section NN here this force F acting downward. So, when I take its moment on section MM it will be F into dx acting clockwise. So, that will be treated as negative so minus F into dx. Then here this point load which was converted from the UDL W into dx is acting at distance dx by 2. So, when I take the moment in the clockwise direction, it will be w into dx into dx by 2. So, that becomes w into dx into dx by 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, your plus m and minus m will get cancelled out. So, we have dm minus f into dx and here this moment is negative because it was acting in the clockwise direction. So, minus w dx square by 2 is equal to 0. Now, since the length is dx is very small, it is just an elemental length. So, if dx is small, then the square of dx will be very very small, almost negligible. So, equal to 0 because keeping the square of this value would be even a smaller value. So, dx square I can take it as 0. In other words, I can say that this entire term would be neglected or it becomes 0. So, what we are left with dm minus fdx then goes on to the other side it becomes plus fdx. So, therefore, f is equal to dm upon dx. So, that is the second equation and equation second gives the relation equation second gives the relation between shear force and bending moment wherein f is the amount of shear force acting on the section of the beam dm is the amount of bending moment and this bending moment will also change as per the distance dx and it will give us the amount of shear force at that section by considering the distance dx so, F and DM relation is there in case of equation second, then intensity of loading and shear force distance in equation one. So, in short, we have seen how to derive the shear force 
and bending moment along with the intensity of loading relation and this relation would be used while solving the problems for SFD and BMD that is shear force and bending moment diagrams. At the end if you will find my videos helpful you all can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends. Thanks for watching.